Hello there. What is going on, everyone? We're talking about 2024 in Star Wars X-Wing. What are we going to see? What might we see? What do we hope to see? Uh, what do we know we're going to see? So that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. There are not a whole lot of big X-Wing news drops in this holiday season that we're at. So we're kind of left kind of picking up the pieces of uh, things that we knew were coming back from Adepticon and kind of, uh, kind of pushing forward into next Adepticon. We didn't really get any updates around Mini Stravaganza. They decided that was going to be focused more on Legion and MCP and Shatterpoint. Uh, so leaving X-Wing and Armada type content to wait until next uh, year's Adepticon, which will be at the end of March, beginning of April, that kind of time frame. So we've kind of got this question of what are we going to see since they didn't decide to give us any news in the later half of 2023? Well, we do have some things uh, from Adepticon that were talked about, some things that are that have already come out, some things that are kind of out now and just now coming out and starting to hit stores, and also things that have not yet come out that we're going to see in 2024. Plus, I'm going to talk about some of the things that uh, I think we are, are likely to expect and maybe even a little bit of wish list items as well. So let me know some of your thoughts down in the comments section. We are still doing 12 Days of Life Day. Also, I'm going to be announcing a winner at the end of this video too. So make sure you watch all the way till the end because we are going to be giving away some pretty cool stuff, some X-Wing promos, and uh, always a fun thing to see. Um, I also want to thank today's sponsor, Luxury Playstyle. Dude, these are amazing full metal tokens. They're absolutely gorgeous, and uh, you're going to love these tokens. Head over to LuxuryPlaystyle.com. Amazing uh, tokens. They're double-sided. They are uh, they're, they're fully compatible with X-Wing. They also have uh, tokens for other games as well, like Legion and Magic the Gathering. Uh, if you use code Crabok VIP, you're going to save 15% off of your order. These make amazing stocking stuffers. They're super good for that. And uh, and, and and that's uh, that's about it. So definitely check them out. I use them in my games. Uh, in my last game against JJ uh, from Planning Phase Syndicate, they were a big hit. So definitely uh, definitely head over to Luxury Playstyle and check those out. All right, so we are going to jump into this. I, I want to recap some of the stuff that we got at Adepticon. So this is kind of what we're going to expect... A, a, at Adepticon in 2024, we're probably going to get a similar kind of rollout where they talk about some of the things that are going to be coming. We've already gotten the YT-2400 and the Thai Bomber. Uh, big like changes to the way like Dash Rendar is kind of now and the, the new reprinted version. But they talked about how their, the big goal was to get the 2.0 ships, uh, you know, reprinted all the 1.0 stuff that's not in 2.0 reprinted. So it'll be, you know, available to people and also legal in standard format. And that's a big push. Uh, store championship kits are out right now. We'll have worlds at Adepticon. There'll be more previews from like prize supports and things like that that are going to be coming for worlds. But these are out right now. Very cool stuff. Also, uh, might be some of these cards. Thanks to JJ from Planning Phase Syndicate. You might see a little bit of stuff from here in today's giveaway. So that's pretty cool. Uh, also, the Children of Mandalore. We played one of these scenarios in our last X-Wing Battle Report. Uh, this is hitting stores now, so you can, uh, or it may, uh, you may have already played this one. So this is all stuff that's kind of coming out now. Will probably still be available to some extent in early 2024. So I want to include it for posterity's sake. But we're getting po to points of the Adepticon uh, showcase of things that we haven't seen yet. Uh, for example, the Battle Over Endor pack. This is another scenario pack. It's going to have a bunch of quick builds and a big scenario. So stuff that you can play as this whole scenario or you can use these quick builds. And they're usually kind of a little bit of power creep in some of these cards. They either are going to have um, you know, different combinations of upgrades and things that you couldn't normally do. Uh, or they're going to be cheaper than that pilot would have normally been. And so they are, they're pretty desirable. And I happen to like the quick builds because as somebody who just plays X-Wing once in a while, uh, it's very easy for me to pick up and go and get a game going when all I have to grab is the quick build card. And I don't necessarily, sorry, the standardized loadout cards. Uh, it's slightly different than what quick builds were, uh, but, uh, you know, it's standardized loadout. Uh, you know, what I love about it over quick builds is the fact that it has all of the text of the upgrades on there. And sometimes they do brand new things with them that you wouldn't have seen otherwise. So that's a pretty cool thing. Um, we're getting a new version of Wedge Antilles in that. And we're also, uh, you know, we're going to get more X-Wings, uh, A-Wings, uh, I believe B-Wings as well. And then we're going to be getting TIE, uh, what, I think, TIE Fighters, TIE Interceptors, and... and uh, and the TIE Defender. So Captain Yor is in a TIE Defender here. Um, 
Again, uh, two p pilot talents on him. So, you know, he's pretty cool stuff. Uh, there's probably going to be some more previews of this coming out. And um, this will be a 2024 release, I believe. And uh, I don't think this is going to be the last scenario pack. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. But also reprints. Uh, there were some reprints that were talked about that we haven't seen yet. Uh, the uh, the Alpha class uh, Starwing, or the, the gunboat, rather, uh, is usually what people call this. This is coming. Um, it, it was. It's funny because this was one of the most fan-requested ships to ever be talked about on the old Fantasy Flight Games uh, message boards, forums. This was like the, the people were diehard crazy about wanting this to show up in the game, uh, especially because it was so prominent in the computer games, the PC games uh, of the 90s that kind of inspired uh, the late 90s, early 2000s or so that kind of inspired X-Wing. And so, uh, you know, the, when this finally made its way into original X-Wing, it was a big hit and also became quickly one of the most sought after ships because it was like a limited print run and then 2.0 came out and they kind of stopped printing these or for whatever reason, these are like super rare and in demand and they're like hard to find, especially in the box. And, um, you know, it's one of the reasons why they don't make them legal and standard play because it wouldn't be fair to new people who are just getting into the game now that now have to spend like a hundred bucks on eBay for you know, for like a $19 ship or something like that. So, uh, so these, these are going to be reprinted. These will be out in 2024 as well. Uh, but that's all we kind of know. Uh, obviously, they're going to be working on more, more reprints. Uh, there's a lot that I'd like to see. I'd like to see the, uh, the attack shuttle. Uh, so you have multiple options to dock with the ghost. Uh, I think that'd be a really cool one. I, I'd like to see the Lambda, actually, because the Lambda never got the 2.0 treatment. And, uh, and, and it, out of all the models I think that we have in X-Wing, I think the original Lambda is one of the, one of the ones that could most use for like a facelift. Um, maybe not a complete redesign, but maybe just a retouched sculpt or at least a fresh paint applications. It was the first ship that had movable parts and it, I feel like it could be done better. I feel like the Lambda needed a whole redesign and uh, to just to make it kind of work better. Uh, but it was also a beautiful ship, and I just I'd like to see it uh, get the 2.0 treatment, even if it's not necessarily the most um, the you know like the most in demand ship that's out there. As far as the model and just be having it reprinted, it's something that I would like to see. But I do think there's other things that we're going to see in 2024. Uh, I, I definitely expect at some point, I don't know if it'll be ready by Adepticon, but at some point I do expect huge ships to be at least talked about again. Now. Huge ships have been through quite a bit uh, between their kind of, you know, their addition to the game, uh, the kind of mixed re reception, and then their kind of absence from 2.0, and then their eventual inclusion into 2.0, and now with 2.5, they're absent again. They're completely illegal to run them in 2.5, and uh, fortunately, the list builders that are out there, like uh, yet another squad builder, has a kind of, a, they have points for them, so, you know, there's a way that you can sort of run them uh, you know, and like with like quick build kind of stuff, our, our standard loadouts kind of enough for them allows it to sort of work. They're not standard loadout, but in the new kind of build formula, uh, it's you know, they've, they've, they've done a little bit to make it work, and it's really cool. So, you kind of can run it, it just can't be any kind of you know, organized play. Like, you can't run it in any official games, but if as long as everybody's okay with doing something that's more of a homebrew plus you know i would consider the folks that yet another squad builder as certainly more of an authority than your typical homebrew so what they have is certainly what i would use if i were playing the uh you know the large ships now but i feel like that's just a band-aid until amg comes out and officially does something and uh and and they went from kind of saying they weren't going to do it well they didn't actually say they weren't going to do it but they implied that they, it wasn't happening to well, maybe it will, but it might be a little while, a ways out. So they definitely wanted to let us know to like, don't hold your breath. But if we're fast forwarding into 2024, I think huge ships might get, uh, you know, possibly a rules update. I think that's very easy for them to do, uh, as opposed to making all new huge ships, which if they did, I think your consular is definitely at the top of the list of ships that need to show up in the game because of the fact that the Trident was like FFG's last huge ship. I'm sure that this was on the list. I would bet, I would bet you, I would bet you that this was the next ship that FFG would have done uh, had they kept going because you can't just release hey, here's a Separatist huge ship and not then do one for Republic, even though, yes, technically Separatist and Republic each have access to one of the huge ships. You, you have this huge lack of symmetry and balance by not having uh, the, the Consular, or at least a 
a huge ship for Republic. Now, granted, they might go a little bigger. It would be awesome. It'd be really, really cool to get bigger, huge ships in the game, and I would love to see that. And Architans, for example, would be... It'd be really big, though. It'd be it'd be almost too big. Almost, because there's no such thing as too big, as far as I'm concerned. But no, it'd be almost too big for a game of X-Wing, but it'd be super fun for, like, a casual game of, like, hey, let's just do a crazy big, like, you know, you get three times as many points and you're going up against my Architans and it's like three TIE Fighters or something like that. Or be great for conventions or really big special games. I'd love that. Same thing with the Nebulon. So the people have home-brewed and home-made their Nebulon bees and they look awesome on the table and it works great for those fun, large games. I'd love to see more of that. So I hope that's something that AMG will do someday, but I'm really not holding my breath about that and I definitely don't expect it in 2024. But if it happened, I would be overjoyed because... Big, big capital ships, especially on an X-Wing playmat, maybe a 6x3 cinematic kind of large-scale game, or even bigger, are, are just really fun to look at, and they get people kind of stopping and be like, whoa, what is that? And, you know, you're playing them in the store. Everybody wants to know. Super cool way to grow the game, grow the community, and get people interested, and makes for great social media posts. Of course, I'm in the business of doing some social media stuff, so I also like it from that aspect. They photograph really well. It'd be super cool. But I think the reasonable expectation is that uh, when they do return to huge ships, it'll just be rules. And then maybe at some point, a huge ship standardized loadout card pack. Again, I don't really think that they're in the business of creating all new pre-painted ships right now. Maybe someday they will be. But I don't think that that's something that I'm going to expect in 2024 or even 2025 for that matter. But it's possible. Again, they do say that they are planning things up to seven years out in some cases. So who knows how far out they're planning and what they're planning to do as far as new X-Wing ships. I feel like if they do new stuff, it's probably going to be ships on a sprue and not pre-painted, pre-assembled ships. I feel like that's a more likely um, event from, from, from AMG. And I think before they do that, they'll probably want to have people, um, you know, more on board with that style of, uh, of new content. And it, it, I think it might take a couple more years for people, before people are like, all right, fine. If, it's, if that's what it's going to take to get us new ships, then fine. And once, the most, once most of the community is like that, then maybe that will be something that they roll out. But, that, but that's not what I'm saying I'm hoping for. That's just something that I think might happen. Um, and it might coincide with like a third edition or something like that. I don't know. But that's, 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 very, that's, that's beyond 2024. So maybe outside the scope of this video. Let's talk about some things that I think are more likely. More scenario packs. I think that's very, very likely. Uh, and I think it's time for, you know, the uh, that Dreadnought, that Imperial, uh, that First Order Dreadnought, that battle from the opening of Episode 8 would make a great situation for that, you know, the, the resistance evacuation. You're trying to hold off. Uh, the First Order has overwhelming firepower. You've got lots and lots of ships. I think this is a perfect opportunity for a scenario pack. Uh, you've got a lot of fighters. You got uh, you've got the resistance bombers. You've got X wings. You've got A wings. You've got Poe. You got lots of lots of important characters here, and a great way to make new standardized loadouts and uh, cover a lot of the bases. You don't have as many as much versatility in the first order ships in this particular battle, but you can certainly uh, you can certainly add some extra things. Like you could add the first order bombers to this one if you wanted. I definitely you put Kylo Ren. Uh, in, in the silencer in this one. I don't think you do the whisper in this one. I think you save that one for like a, an episode nine one. Again, sequel trilogy, there's, a, there's quite a few space battles. There's, there's multiple opportunities. They could even do one from episode seven if they wanted to do a basic like T-70 versus, you know, TIE SFs and, and stuff like that. I think they could do that. But here, uh, I, think, uh, I think this is your best opening bet uh, at the beginning of episode eight. Well, what a cool space battle this was too. Uh, I really liked it. I liked Episode Eight a lot, uh, more more than a lot of other people. But uh, it had a lot of really good things, and this was a good space battle. Perfect opportunity for a scenario pack right here. Um, a lot of a lot of other great options. I feel like Rogue One is an, also a great opportunity for a space battle. You had so many Tie Fighters, you had so many Rebel Fighters. You'd have to do a little bit of different stuff with this one. Now, you know, like this would be a really good one also if you were going to you know bring back huge ships because. Again, Rogue One was like the movie that combined all three of Fantasy Flight games uh, games at the time. Um, you you know you had you had the Legion, you had the ground battle stuff, or even Imperial Assault actually at the time. Um, you had you know you had the ground battle, you had X Wing, you had the you know the Sky battle, and then you had the Capital Ship battle too. So you had you know had content for all of the games that F Fantasy Flight games was making at the time, and Rogue One uh, fits into all games, and also it 
it could mark the opportunity for a multi-game event. This could launch, like, and if they do a scenario pack, it could go along with them saying, hey, here, here's a a multi, uh, multi-game multi scenario pack. We're going to be launching, you know, these for all of these games to be played maybe simultaneously or to feed off of each other or something like that. And it can all be based on Rogue One. You've got Armada content right there. You've got X-Wing content. Obviously, you've got Legion content. And you could even squeeze Shatterpoint content into that to coincide with perhaps the launch of, like, maybe Krennic uh, and, and stuff like that into Shatterpoint uh, and Jyn Erso and all of that. They dev- definitely kind of hinted that spies were coming. So I definitely feel like more Rogue One content is coming to AMG's games, which kind of leads me to say, hey, it'd be a great time to launch, you know, a whole wave of content for all of your games and have it all synchronize into something like Rogue One, which is just the perfect synchronization method to do it. Let me know if you agree with that in the comments section. A scenario pack here would easily have like a shield gate uh, cardboard, like two of those pieces and, uh, you know, having the Rebels do an attack run. Uh, on the shield gate, trying to get, just try, trying to poke a hole through. Maybe the shield gate has mul- multiple portions, and uh, and you know they have to re- you know rebalance shields. You're just trying to poke one little hole through uh, to get that signal out, and uh, and and the empire's just got you know ten times as many tie fighters. You know, I mean that, that's kind of a, a way a lot of a lot of that stuff would go. But uh, yeah, it definitely works. Uh, definitely writes itself. I am curious what extra ships they might bring. I would imagine, though, uh, the Lambda Shuttle would work here. Uh, I think you could probably get away with TIE Bombers as well, and uh, obviously TIE Fighters, but uh, but I think the Lambda Shuttle works in this one. Uh, we'll have to see. I mean, there was, there was a lot of different cargo shuttles that were in use, but those don't currently exist in X-Wing just yet. So they, But then again, they could always take some liberties like they did with the Battle at Yavin and say, hey, let's just put TIE Interceptors here. You can pick any other ship. You can pick the gunboat for example, and put it in here if you really wanted to, uh, because I think we'd probably be okay with that. You don't have to use it in your scenario, but you certainly can, and it'd be super cool to do it. Try out, uh, see if the battle would have gone a little differently if a gunboat had been there. Uh, You know, nothing wrong with uh, taking a few creative liberties for game balance. Sometimes game balance has to trump thematic balance, so that's certainly a way that we can go. So, uh, so that is uh, that's some of my predictions for 2024. I think we're going to see more scenario packs, more card packs, and digital uh, releases like rules and points updates are the most likely things that I think we're going to see. I don't see, well, think we'll see a whole lot of uh, physical printed product other than some, some reprints. We're definitely going to get some reprints, uh, but I don't really think any new ships are in the, in the works for 2024. Well, though I would love, I'd be delighted to be proven wrong on that aspect you let me know what you guys think we got some giveaways we're gonna do i want to thank jj from planning phase syndicate for providing these so if you guys haven't checked out planning phase syndicate they have an awesome x-wing podcast and jj has been a long time uh, friend of the channel uh you can also check out me playing jj in our last x-wing battle report which i'll link over here uh but yeah we're gonna be giving out we got a bunch of these we've got let's see we've got uh keo venzi uh these are top four prizes from the latest store champ kit We've got uh, the second sister in the TIE Interceptor there. We've got uh, Lieutenant Lieutenant Gallic, and I think this is a First Order TIE. Yeah, First Order TIE. And then we've got a Resistance, um, Resistance uh, uh, Venisa Doza alternate art, too. So these are all top four prizes. So big thanks to JJ and Planning Phase Syndicate. Uh, and those are going to go out to our winner today, who's going to be Elcor Bonbon. Congratulations, Elcor Bonbon. Uh, you know, if you didn't win this one, don't worry. There's going to be more all month long. What you have to do is be a sub- subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos, and uh, that enters you to win this or any, any of the other giveaways. So, uh, big thanks to everybody that has hung out with us today, and make sure you check the links in the description below for more like social media, join our Discord, all of that good stuff. I will talk to you guys later. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Big thanks. To my patrons, you guys are amazing and help make this channel possible. I will talk to you later. May the force be with you. Live long and prosper. Be excellent to each other. Party on, dudes. Always wash your socks. The spice must flow. And I already said always wash your socks, but wash them again just for good mether. Mether. And measure. And mether. And everything.